video starts. One, two, three. Hello everyone. It's Mike Levin. It's Addie Levin. On Friday, September 25th at around 2 o'clock p.m. I'm heading home from Staten Island, driving over the Verrazano Bridge right now. Maybe you can see it out in the corner here. But uh, we hung out at the grandparents, uh, the in-laws a little bit, even though uh, uh, they had a runoff. Well, Ma Granny had a runoff and meet uh, Wilhelm. And so it was just Addie and me and Uncle Joe sleeping downstairs and we watched a little TV, old-fashioned TV, where the commercials and the shows just keep on coming. And we decided to go home and we're going to go to the Catskills, so that's what's going on right now. We're going to stop home first. And the thing I want to talk about now is still the use of a pen on something like paper. Not quite paper, but the electronic screen of the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. And this is my second Note phone from 3 to 5. And I'm glad I made the decision to stay with it because the two years I was on the Note 3 has hardly been enough time for me to get back into the habit of having a pen and paper on me all the time and having the freedom to sketch and doodle and even to animate. I found my first onion skinning animation package. I forget exactly what it's called, but if it's any good, I'll be talking about it. But Addie did her first animation, drawing on multiple frames. And I think back to the Amiga days once again, Disney Animation Studio, and how uh, you were limited in bit depth and how you had to do a low number of uh, colors, low resolution to have a nice fluid motion. And now how on merely a telephone, you have a 24-bit background image and as much frames as you want to add for drawing with the onion skin effect in full glorious true color, what we used to call it. Of course, it's no longer 24-bit. It must be more like a 36-bit, I would assume it is. Uh, 12 more bits because it's always an increment of, uh, you know, uh, 12, I believe. So anyway, uh, for transparency, you've got, uh, you've got another s set of digits for setting the transparency level. And it seems these days that you've actually got what on the Amiga days, it was bit plane graphics, uh, but you have it with chunky graph, chunky graphic bit planes is what it seems. I don't know how true it is, but it seems to me that uh, something like bit planes are being handled independently with how fluid the motion is on 24-bit on modern video graphics hardware, which is also what's built into phones. So uh, I am thoroughly enjoying the process of Seeing the applications mature in the Google Play and Android marketplaces to get back up to par with what it was like 25 years ago on the Amiga with things software like Disney Animation Studio. And I gotta say it's just awesome and I'm feeling more and more comfortable and at home on these phones. Although there are occasionally the killer apps that were available on iPhone that aren't strangely available on Android or don't even have comparable equivalents. I used to like making comic books that could be exported as multi-page PDFs on the iPhone using software called Vivid Strip Designer. And it was kind of like comic life on the Mac, but it was really made for uh, the iPhone and iPad interface, and it was awesome, really good native mobile creation software. And I tried all the different comic book making software on Android, and it just isn't there yet. While other things have far exceeded it on Android, and it's just interesting watching the spottiness of software category development 
and the presence and non-presence of killer apps in each category. And it's super ironic that after so many years, I finally have replaced Photoshop and Illustrator in my heart on the desktop with GIMP and Inkscape, which are free and open source equivalent software. And they're both sort of the killer app of their category now in, uh, in the desktop environment along with Blender for 3D graphics and modeling and 3D animation and one might even say video editing. Uh, the bumps? Okay, I'll get in a different lane with fewer bumps. And just as I'm hitting my stride on the desktop, bam, the desktop is not my preferred platform anymore because the Note 5 in my pocket is just always on me, has that stylus for a better than Wacom tablet drawing experience and uh, is, you know, has the generally superior mobile interface where you don't have windows but you have stacked apps. A lot more Amiga-like, a lot more like Amiga screens. And mobile is awesome, iPhone was awesome, Android, especially with Lollipop now, is becoming awesome. And I'm now in my exploratory phase. What are the deluxe paints? What are the Lightwave 3Ds? Uh, let's see, uh, what other categories? Uh, what are the 80 Pros? And uh, the Brilliances? And uh, Sculpt 3D? All these names are coming back to me from reading that book now. Uh, the MIT Press Platform Studies, The Future Was Here. And uh, I think my time is coming. I think I'm a dot connector. And there's a lot of dots that are now just finally, after 25 years of sort of waiting around for a mainstream platform to offer those dots, they're finally offered. And I can cobble things together now that were never before possible. And you're starting to begin to see it in things like Linux, which cobbles together such diverse things to a surprising effect. A tiny Linux virtual machine that can boot with a double click on the desktop of a Mac, a Windows machine, or another Linux machine, all having the same hard drive in common. So you just do your work, you leave it and then you come back to it again later on a different platform, auto-synchronized perhaps by Dropbox or carried with you maybe on a USB keychain. And that same exact environment right down to the data files that you last saved are there on you. So as you can imagine, it's the perfect uh, nomadic, uh, nomadic is a term that the tiny core Linux people use, the perfect nomadic persistent Linux environment but combined with things like Dropbox, you get more than portability, you get distributed uh, backups. So your system exists on as many platforms as you have, um, as you have Dropbox on. So it's copied, copied, copied everywhere. And because it's so small and such a minimal Linux platform, the little synchronization bits uh, of Dropbox to get whole hard drives, whole virtual hard drives in sync with each other is instantaneous. It's less than a Word file being synchronized in Dropbox. So those are some dots I'm connecting, but I'm using ancient QEMU PC emulator binaries, the popular ones that are out there that have checksums and, uh, you know, highly trusted and have high levels of compatibility, but I'm making this magic cocktail that's kind of already dated and has an expiration date, although I'm managing to keep it running on a lot of heterogeneous host platforms. Don't ask me how, but with some tiny exceptions here and there, like crashing on some Windows 10, Linux is just surprisingly durable. So those are some of the dots I'm connecting to do something unique and special and maybe uh, some legacy building stuff uh, uh, that's possible today. But I'm not going to stop there. It turns out that finally the visual arts are coming back into style and the ability to create powerful visuals is as important and more important than ever. I think it started with the 
uh, emergence of Pinterest, and then it continued with Instagram, and now everyone needs to produce infographics, and what's called GIFs, but to me are Anim GIFs, are having a uh, ferociously popular second or third uh, life to them uh, as the preferred media for, for a lot of memes that require animation and no heavyweight video player support uh, for playback, especially when audio is not required. And these are all very Amiga-like things. I described that in the IFF file format pops into my head that supported all this stuff. I used to paint with Anim brushes and deluxe paint, and I can't wait for the equivalent to Anim brushes to hit the Android platform, which you can just see the direction the software is coming. It's it's on its way, or is already there, especially if you use all these, you know, Amiga emulation platforms that are uh, already on the uh, Android platform. The problem is all this stuff is obscure and not mainstream. And as obscure, non-mainstream software, let's see, do I do FDR or Westside Highway? I'll do FDR. It's not going to be too busy. Um, whenever software is not really in the mainstream, getting critical uptake in order to pay for, you know, dedicated development, it's rough around the edges. It's someone's hobby. So that brings us to what is my GIMP and Inkscape on the mobile platform? Ugh. Right when I know what they are on the desktop platform, carpet is pulled out from under me again. And it's hard to put it together because there's not FOSS on mobile quite like there is on desktop. There's so much fragmentation. Uh, software is so evolved on the iPhone platform and so experimental and early stage on the Android platform with only a few exceptions, it seems. Autodesk, our good old friends, Autodesk, who's always the dark horse in graphics, I believe they are the heir to things like Fractal Painter um, and other platforms that over the years have been uh, natural media, more natural drawing environment alternatives to Photoshop, particularly for use with tablets. But Autodesk has Sketchbook, and Sketchbook has come out on both iPhone and Android platforms in various flavors over the years, but still has been pretty much consistent in its user interface. Little tweaks here and there, but learning it is learning it, and muscle memory can kick in, and you have a viable, top-notch, polished drawing platform, be it iOS, Android, tablet, or phone. And so Sketchbook Pro, proprietary or not, is becoming my preferred drawing platform on Android. It's got the layers, it's got a wonderful, well thought out, mobile friendly user interface with fixed positions and all the right things so that you can start to get faster and faster on drawing. And you can tell they've got hooks to DeviantArt, which is a popular website for people to sell their uh, original creations to make some money on digital artwork and their artistic ability, almost like a, you know, a patron uh, setup. It's not like patron, uh, Patreon itself, which is something different. But if you want to get a little bit of, uh, you know, beer money for your artwork, there's DeviantArt. I would imagine it's especially good for young people and up-and-comers to just learn the lesson that uh, artistic skills and being able to do something unique and creative and original has monetary value. Originality uh, that is appealing to a portion of the, you know, of the population is currency, is modern currency. We're going in a good direction. Not everyone has to be an app developer. Now just being a musician or an artist is enough to get uh, started in the, uh, the evolving digital economy. Of course, it's not the arriving digital economy. It's already here. It's probably a billion, approaching a trillion, trillion dollar industry when you add all the companies revenues together. But uh, uh, the way for the small guy to get a piece of the action is what I'm interested in. And pure drawing ability is so 
uh, underrated because you've had to do it with your fingertip for so many years on the mobile platform. And I guess iPad is finally starting to come around with the Apple Pencil and the, the iPad Pro. Uh, but not for me because if it's not on you, what good is it? Is it? So tweaking out the phone device into the largest possible form factor, i.e. the phablet, the phone tablet, giving it the highest quality stylus that's always on you and easy to access. In other words, an undersized pen that slides into the phone for safekeeping is the killer form factor platform technology for someone who needs a pen to be a visual communicator. And uh, I didn't believe it for a long time until I saw the Note 3 demonstrated, I, or there was a Note 2 demonstrated at 360i by a, a friend Isaac, or Ike. Um, I'll use his full name and give shout out credit. But uh, all these talking videos that I'm doing like this are kind of all just the build for me doing the more unique artistic things with the pen. And I like to capture the pen drawing process. Uh, right now I'm working off of a program called uh, Whiteboard Casting, which is okay. Another one called Lenzu seems to be a little bit superior, but it's a subscription model and I ended up spending a lot of money and never using the thing. So I canceled that subscription, but I might try it again because it does seem to be smoother and I think it can do the talking head. So I'll be able to superimpose my head in a corner while I draw. And that just might be the killer combination. And uh, again, I'm trying to minimize my video editing because video Don't editing... Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Addy's telling me I'm done. Am I done this video? Your daddy could talk forever. Anything you want to say, Addy? Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Are you going to want to do some drawing with me? Because you have my Note 3 now. You have my old phone. Yes, I would. Okay, well maybe we'll do uh, daddy-daughter drawing sessions and... Uh, fun. That sounds like fun. Fun drawing with dad. Fun drawing with dad. All right. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you again soon. And Don't forget to subscribe. Like she said. Traffic on the FDR.